Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusker, here for another special edition of the show. I got Alessandro Pasqua, right? Did I say Ciao, Mark. Right? That's perfect. Yes. Pasqua. Pasqua. So, with Pasqua, we made sure we got the barrel in here. Um, anyway, uh, he's kind enough to give me some time here. We're doing a separate episode. Um, so, this is actually going to be the last interview before the recap of Provine stuff. So, um, we've got that going on. And uh, we're also going to have some dinner tomorrow. Tomorrow which night. I'm big night. so happy it's tomorrow night because originally I thought it was Tuesday night, which mean which meant not good for me because the early fight in the morning on Wednesday. But I'm so happy I found that out. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, so why don't you kind of go through, uh, kind of introduce yourself and um, kind of talk about the history. We'll start with that with, with the winery and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have you here, first of all. When I knew you wanted to spend some of your time to interview us, I said, that's awesome that we can spread the love and the message out of, uh, out of you know, of, out of Italy. So I'm Alessandro, Alessandro mm -hmm. Pasqua. Uh, I'm part of the third generation of the family, the producer Pasqua. And uh, I'm living in New York. I'm a U.S. guy, if okay. you want. The, this is because the U.S. is very important for us and for the winery. And so that's why we established it the, an office and a place there. That's why I live there in Manhattan, which I really love. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a downtown guy, like uh, oh, in, nice. uh, in Greenwich Village, in the village. And uh, before joining Pasqua, I'm 35 years old, even if I'm full of white hair. Uh, that was a couple years ago, sides. right? And uh, I'm, ex exactly. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. That's too much wine, probably. I don't know what's the thing. I, I used to be in consulting before. Bain okay. & Company it was a, it's an American firm that was very famous because of uh, Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, okay, yeah. candidate president. And I yeah. was in that firm for five, six years. And then I joined Pasqua Winery in 2014. Okay. And since then, has been a fantastic progression of uh, adventures and, and fun and uh, and so i worked at the winery for a couple of years and then in 2016 i moved in the u.s in, uh, in new york okay so pasqua i'm lucky enough to be born in this family at the end of the day is one of the oldest producer in uh, of amarone okay uh, is still all, all family owned together with uh, some very good colleagues i mean you know we have the tomasi family the allegrini the masi so we are proud to be part of this uh, fine wine producers group and uh, my father is still involved the second generation and third generation okay. together with my brother Ricardo which is our CEO and uh, across the years we've been uh, I was telling you before a little bit we, we always try to work on the Venetian production mostly we are specialized in the Veronese uh, uh, story the Veronese wine making uh, style the appassimento method so the Amarone right. and the Veronese grapes okay for interest of my uh, viewers who may not know what the appassimento means, can you kind of go over what that means? Please, absolutely. I mean, the appassimento is something that was born uh, in the very beginning of the century in Verona to make a sweet wine, mm -hmm. the Reciotto. Reciotto di Valpolicella was a sweet wine made uh, where you go and make the harvest. It's always a manual harvest. Right. So, and that's why also the, the, uh, the way the vineyards are made are for this purpose, it's called pergola. So you have a roof of, uh, uh, you know, leaves and grapes. Okay. And so the people was going up there and cutting the grapes and putting in the fruit cases, in the, in the mats. So you do one layer of grapes on the, on the cases and you okay. dry the grapes out for about uh, uh, one month, three months, depending on the wine. Okay. So the idea is to get this kind of raising grapes okay. where the water evaporates 
separates a little bit and you have a, a little raisin look like uh, grapes. The last thing I want to tell you, the difference from Sicily, in Verona we don't do the appassimento outdoor. In okay. Sicily they put the grapes on the field and right. the sun. We, we have a room made on purpose with a lot of ventilation and controlled air to make the dry pristine and uh, perfect condition for the grapes. Okay. So it's not necessarily sun dried, it's just dry. Yeah, it's not dried sun dried, yeah. it's dry out. There is a, this room is called fruttaio, the fruit room. Okay. It's a room where you pile up all these straw mats. Yeah. And stop if my English is not understandable. No, it's good. I'm trying and, hard. I'm working hard. I'm working hard on the accent. If, if, if I need to explain something, I can explain it to them. So. Because they know the accent. Sometimes I, I work on it and then I realize after a while it doesn't work. Maybe but. it's just because, you know, with my family, not that, not that anything. True. My, my grandparents and my one aunt were literally straight off the boat in the, in yeah. the 20s, but um, I've been around the, the accent long enough that I don't really have a problem with it. I normally. used to be at college with a guy called Fusco, Lorenzo yeah. Fusco. Maybe he's yeah. one of your relatives. And know. we actually, so my, uh, not, to, not to interrupt your story, but my sto on my story, my, my, my grandfather came over here. He actually changed our pronunciation to Fusco. Okay. And about half of, uh, half of the Fuscos in the United States apparently pronounced it how we do and the other half pronounce it the proper Italian way. Fusco. <laughs> see. Exactly. <laughs> and you got to talk with your hands. And also real quick, you guys can't see. I'm gonna do, I'll shoot video um, after this. I, I, I went to Ali. I said, leave it to the Italians that have the, have, the, have the most stylish hall of everybody. And I haven't seen the rest of the halls hard. of the hard. three I've seen. Oh. This is absolutely the most beautiful of the halls, but that's because Thank you. Thank you. That's we nice have the most style, right? Thank I don't, but we do. I want to anyway. do an American thing now. <laughs> He got blown up. He blew it up. French fries. Awesome. That's what they say. <laughs> he blew it up. That's awesome. All right. So it, back to enough about me. <laughs> no, no, back to but, uh, back to. Um, so you have it on the straw mats in, exactly, in the fruit room. Yes. Exactly. So and we have about uh, 100, 150 fans that we move around the, the room to ensure the same level of uh, airflow. Okay. So the grapes don't get rotten, don't get mold because you need the fresh, dried grapes to mm -hmm. make a good wine. Okay. Um, so that's that's a passamente, right? Yeah, a passamente. Right. Yes. My Italian pronunciation isn't the best, <laughs> but which is not sad. Too bad. It, should, it should it should be not better. Um, but you grew up in San Antonio. We're not really surrounded by my family. It's a little bit different. Uh, so so, um, so that's the history of it. So you you you. Um, Specialize or concentrate, or or um, specialize. You concentrate in in the, the traditional uh, wine making process. Yes. Uh, about how many wines do you do you make total? I would say. Uh... It's, it's more of like we try to interpret all the grapes of the mm -hmm. region. So okay. the Corvina grape in particular, the Garganega grape, which is the white grape from Soave, Venetian. I know, of course, the French one or the American are probably most famous, but the Veneto, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon can okay. be fantastic. Yeah. And then we do a little uh, production in Puglia. The origin of the family at the end of the day is from the southern back in, in time. Yes. So we still have a production in Puglia, in southern Italy, which is the, the hill Mm -hmm. of the boot, you know, the yeah. shape. You know, because they're Italian. Yeah, like I know. Me, so, you know, exactly. For them, they may not remember and they may not know where they're But uh, if I can say also, you say very traditional way making style, for sure, because mm -hmm. the passimento is very traditional. But we try to apply that knowledge to new wines and new styles. So, for example, we did uh, an appassimento method, like the Amarone, on a white wine, which was unseen before. So the Garganica grape, maybe some of our friends, they know the Soave. Yes. Which, which is the white grape from uh, and they, well, the white wine from Verona, the, the Garganica grape. We do an early harvest and a passimento method on Garganica, which okay. is the passimento white you tried, I think. And that's very unique, it's different. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the kind of innovation we try to do. We are launching now, we just launched a natural Valpolicella, the first Valpolicella natural in history of Verona. Okay. And, uh, and now we are gonna work on a fantastic white wine with a very particular, 
styling winemaking again. Okay. So old process, but uh, towards the future. That's the idea. Very nice. And then uh, with the Puglia, what are you? What are you doing? The traditional. Um, are, I, I lost the, the name of the grape. All of a sudden. Uh, primitivo. Zinfandel. Primitivo. Yeah. Primitivo, you know. Primitivo. Absolutely. The, the cousin absolutely. of Zinfandel. <laughs> absolutely. Primitivo yeah. is our uh, wine from, yeah. from Puglia. Absolutely. Very nice. Yeah. And we try, you know, to make a little bit like it was in the past as well with the appassimento style mm -hmm. because the appassimento method was also done in Puglia a little bit, not okay. only in Verona. And uh, yeah, and we tried that. And so it's a couple of uh, ideas on Primitivo. Nice. Which is awesome. Tastes pretty good. Very nice. Um, so uh, with, with your wines, um, we probably should have had a couple of wines here. <laughs> now that I think about it. Maybe that's not a bad idea. We can work on it. We, we can, can ask, work on it. We, we can, can ask, yeah. get somebody to, to bring some. Yes. Um, so uh, where where exactly is the winery located? So we are in Verona. Mm -hmm. Verona is a marvelous antique Roman city uh, from uh, in the northeast. I don't know if you've ever been to Verona. Maybe in your trip. I have yet to even visit Italy, which... Italy, okay. Yeah, so I still have to get to just the country of Italy, but yeah. We Verona wait for, for you sure. the winery. We yeah. wait for you. <laughs> so it's a marvelous city because we have a Colosseum. There are the hills with the vineyards. There is the river across the city, which is a, a Roman city. So it's from before Christ. Mm -hmm. It's like 2,000 years old. And there is a fantastic lake, Lake Garda. Yes. And it's a beautiful spot. It's between Milan and Venice. And it's a wine region together with Tuscany, with the Brunellos mm -hmm. and Barolo in Piedmont. is the other probably most iconic wine region in Italy. Yes. But then we are lucky enough in Italy is full of other nice wine producing areas. But Verona is for sure one of the staples. And it's lovely. It's a beautiful place. And uh, the winery has always been there. And uh, as I was mentioning before, maybe we are one of the historical wineries since 1925, which, mm -hmm. is, which is nice because, you know, it's uh, there is a lot of history there. Um, and uh, the food is great. Yeah, I bet, right? The food is great there. So um, was there something before the wine, before 1925? Was it something there or was it was it a different winery or? Not really, okay. no. Was it a, my family was originally from Puglia, again, from mm -hmm. Southern Italy. That's why we kept some Zinfandel production. Right. And then they were doing wine there, but then they said, Verona, it's an upcoming place. It's an upcoming region. So let's try to make something there. And they found this old convent where all the nuns and priests were praying and retiring. And they made the winery out of it in the city center, pretty much. Now okay. it's a residential area. And then they bought the first vineyards up there. And then the first, the winery came out there with, you know, and they were kind of ahead back in the time because in the 40s, they put together the first bottling line, automatic, okay. which was the first time that the bottle business, you know, was like coming a modern, like we know wine today. Right, right. So that's how it started. It's, it's awesome. Some of the vineyards are still are still there with the same vines. So almost 100 years old. Okay. Corvina or Cabernet or uh, Merlot grapes. Right. Yes. What brought the family north from Apulia? I think the story is that uh, one of the relatives was uh, an important general in the army and they had some properties there as a family. So they, they said they, my grandfather was 20 years old and he said, you know what, in Puglia we're doing our business with wine is good, but we have this opportunity up there. It's not developed as a region of wine. Why don't we try? So they started with the wine business and they bought uh, seven uh, Osteria. You know Osteria? It's like our yeah, family uh, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, restaurant. Like yeah, a yeah. restaurant mm -hmm. where the, the, the food is surprisingly good and somehow cheap in Italy. That's the beauty right. of Italy, you know? Food and wine are and awesome. house wine is apparently always good it's too. Perfect, yeah, it's perfect <laughs> stuff. And, and so they started all with that and then they saw that the wine was going through the restaurant very successful. Yeah. And then they invested in, and then they they, they rode from let's develop our winemaking knowledge in another region from a property. They said let's become a uh, I don't know, I want to use a bad word now. A kick-ass winery, you know? That's now. fine. That's, that's fine. That's you what can I want to say. Whatever language you want. Okay, you thanks. Say it Italian that was want. Italian. <laughs> that was the Italian version. <laughs> it was the Italian version. <laughs> I, I, uh, I actually 
a, well, as far as the time for this for this for this um, show would be like two or three weeks ago. Show uh, I did an interview and there was definitely some colorful language being yeah? used. Yeah, not like not, what? Like uh, some f bombs and you know things like that. Not not uh, not a lot. Just oh, every once in a while, just for accent. <laughs> I was I was like, all right, no no worries. <laughs> oh, you, you want me to say bad words in Italian? Yes. No? Like Maybe fangul? later. <laughs> like fangul. Fangul. <laughs> fangul. Yeah, exactly. Um, Here we go. <laughs> it took only ten minutes to only get to the minutes, bad words. Right? Yeah. Uh, actually, I think this I think the word, this word I know is actually not really Italian. I think it's more of an Italian American. Huh? Gabagats. Huh? Eh, yeah. Don't, don't say too much. Yeah. Like, yeah, come yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't embarrass myself because my, my pronunciation is that great. I'm going to drink some more. This is fruit juice. It's not orange wine, just so you know. That's um, right. <laughs> That's a good idea. So, um, um, with the wines that you make, is there anything... Um, is there anything that you kind of consider like a specialty for you, um, or something that you really concentrate on, or, mean, a, uh, or a signature? Personally, or, or as a wine, do you think? As a, okay, both. How about both for a winery? Both. Is there something that's like your signature wine that that's the wine you're known for? I would say, let me let me put this uh, simple if I can. Also, in a family perspective, four or five years ago, a big change happened because. Uh, we, we, you know, some of, we, it's only my family now, it's pretty much, so we wanted to do a lot of in the imprinting, in the winemaking, and we wanted to be sure that every project that come out of the winery is uh, connected, there is a fil rouge and there is an idea and a story behind it, okay. which is a true fun story. Uh, so, in the last, especially four or five years, we've been developing many, many fun projects. I, the, the one we focus the most are the Romeo and Juliet, the Passimento white and red, okay. the Amarone, the new Rosé 11 minutes, uh, which I think I, we should show to the... the yeah, absolutely. Because it's, uh, it's fantastic and uh, I want to grab the bottle for you and then the single vineyard Amarone, Mai Dire Mai, which is also the wine where I feel more connected to, okay. because it's a single vineyard, fantastic, uh, 600 meters above the sea level, uh, Amarone and Valpolicella Superiore. So very old school uh, approach, if you want, but very also innovative in the wine, the wine style, the style right. of the wine. And it's called Never Say Never, Mai Dire Mai, because the property we could take for this wine is unbelievable, it's breathtaking. Yeah. So Valpolicella is a small community. They, they change ends every year about five, six acres. It's nothing. If you think yeah. that some American producer, they own 50,000 hectares, 100,000 yeah. acres, I don't mm -hmm. know. So it's nothing. And this, this piece of land was awesome. It was about 60 acres and it was a, a hill, a, a top of a hill. It was fantastic. And I have goosebumps now talking about it. If you go there, it's fantastic. Nice. I hope I can bring you there in Verona one day. Yeah. That, I, 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 Yet on the list of places I have to go to now. I think not just that you want to, but I have to go to now because now I've met you. <laughs> I hope you're coming back to visit me. Oh, I, absolutely! I so. As soon as I can. Um, you want us to try you want to, me get to get those some, some wines? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, take off the microphone real quick. I'll kind of kill time here while you go grab that. <laughs> so. Um, to kind of like take up some time here real quick, I, I do first want to thank um, Jane and Kate uh, from Creative Palette. They're the people that have actually set me up with this appointment with Ale, um, and also for the awesome dinner we're going to have uh, tomorrow night, which I'm floored that I'm going to be able to do stuff like that. Um, and just kind of a preview of what you'll see for the Provine um, episodes coming up. This is pretty incredible. I haven't even scratched the surface of what um, is even here. I've, I've only tasted really a few wines other than uh, a couple of the tasting appointments I've had and um, it's pretty incredible what's what's going on here and this is only day one so I don't know what I'm going to do in the next two days. It's, it's pretty pretty awesome. Um, so looks like we got the first wine there. And then um, uh, just the experience here in uh, in Germany has been wonderful. Everyone's been super nice, and um, I've only had one slightly not great experience. I won't go through it. Um, has to do with the combinations I had, but I'm, I'm not going to say anything else on that. Um, just know that I changed my combinations here in Dusseldorf. A little shake. <laughs> 
a little shake on the uh, Shall we start on, the, on the floor there. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and I think this is your check. Yeah, that's yours. <laughs> uh, then you can work on. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this is the first one we're gonna do. This is yes. Uh, then, this Eleven minutes. Ori et amo rose. Yes. All right. Hold on. Let me see. What do you see there? Uh, s song and love? Let me help you here. It is, uh, I, I don't, I'm trying to use my Latin on this, but... No, so the, the idea is uh, 11 minutes uh, has yeah. a couple of uh, meanings here. The okay. first one is the skin contact, because this wine is made of mostly red grapes. Okay. Exactly, we are talking about Corvina, a little Syrah, a little Carmener, and Trebbiano di Lugano, which is a white grape. And 11 minutes is the skin contact we need to achieve this color. So it's okay. a pressing time and then you see there is all of a full poem around the label it's called uh, Odietamo from Catullo which is the first uh, recognized love poet from Verona in the uh, Roman time okay and all this poem is written around here and his muse is looking at you in the middle of the circle you see the lady we're gonna try to see I have no idea if you're gonna be able to see that what I'll do is I'll try to take a picture here Hey, there's a reason to not use the phone this time. Um, so I'm using my new toy. Let's see if I can get yeah. a good shot of that. Oh, there we go. Looking good. All right, so there should be a, we should have the picture up. All right. And, uh, and then according to the poem, 11 minutes is the perfect time. Okay. The perfect. It's the perfect time? It's all okay. about skin con. It's all about skin con. <laughs> And that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Was the perfect time for who? The guy? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Where, where, right. where, where, you know, I in like this that. case, in this case, exactly. Then we put this little glass closure here. Glass closure. Yeah. So yeah, you have like. I'm gonna exactly. open it. Exactly. And we want to make something fun for our the people we yeah. love, the people that want to buy our wine because you go to a nice dinner and you know this is kind of a gift. You you bring a couple of these bottles, they are beautiful looking and and uh grazie mille. And uh there we go. I love these types of enclosures, they're really cool. I don't see them very often, um, yeah. but they're really cool. And, and yeah. I don't remember what the exact name on these is, but. Uh, we call it glass closure at the end of the yeah. day. And uh, the people love to use the bottle again because this is a, a grappa uh, style bottle. Okay. And you know, grappa is made in Veneto too, but some of the grappa is not far away from Verona. I actually didn't, I didn't remember that. I just knew yes. grappa was, was an Italian. It's an Italian Itali spirit. Yeah. yeah, but I never couldn't remember where it's from. It's made out of the uh, most out of the uh, used grapes right after you make the wine the distillery pick up your grapes and make mm -hmm. the distillation out and make the grappa which is why they so, call it grappa, uh, grappa right? yeah. of amarone <laughs> yeah. grappa of uh, moscato yeah. could be grappa right. of many grapes yeah and this is a uh, an 18 so just just recently bottled uh, uh, yeah it Maybe was like bottled in December actually in December okay so, about three so months ago. we try okay. to be very fresh with the vintage on the rosé okay because we like, I think is a wine that is meant to be fresh and also a little bit to make the market happy because they are very sensitive okay. if you want on the vintage and uh, and yes I mean uh, it's it's doing fantastic in the US I have to say everywhere we present this wine everybody who tastes the wine is intrigued by the taste of it and the uh, you know the, the company of the bottle because it's a good looking bottle mm -hmm. it looks precious the wine taste but it's not sweet and you finish a bottle in 11 minutes maybe 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 less. <laughs> Maybe less than that. Maybe. Um, we need some glasses though. You want to try? Yeah. Sure. Um, I can just dump the water out. Or yeah, well, let's water. use this one. Very nice. Ci porti un cavatappi, per favore. Let me try with you. Yes, please. So, I was mentioning you before, maybe we have 50% Corvina, grazie. Mm -hmm. uh, 
25 Trebbiano di Lugana, which is a native white grape from Lake Garda. Okay. And that's also why we have this poem around the label, because the, this artist was living where the vineyards are, in that okay. area, the Lake Garda. Uh, 15% is a Syrah and 10% is Carmener. Okay. I know many people think Carmener is only left in Chile. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but there is, but there, is, there is still some in France and there is still some in uh, northern Veneto, Lake okay. Garda in Tuscany. I didn't know that there was any Carmenere actually up in that part of Italy or no, anywhere no, no, in Italy. No, yeah, yeah. I just knew Trentino it was like, Adige, too. I knew it was like a very small part in Bordeaux still. And yeah, Chile is where everyone is. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, no, absolutely. There yeah. is, a, there is a, some of that left. And for example, there is a fantastic wine called San Leonardo from Trentino Alto Adige. It's mostly made of Carmenere and with a All relevant right. part of Carmenere and it's awesome. Uh, See, you see, thanks to the, the Corvina grape, the Syrah, and the red grapes in particular gives you this fruit note, a little of mm -hmm. the cherry, which is a, the signature note of Corvina, the Valpolicella grape. Right. But on the other hand, the acidity of, of uh, Trebbiano di Lugano is very bright, right. and they have to, to balance the two of them and the dry finish. Yeah, and I, I also get like this dry um, little... Um, uh, spice characteristic, uh, yeah. a little bit, of, little, little bit, of touch of spiciness to it. Uh, not, not hot, spicy, but like spicy. Yeah, maybe a little bit the heat of Syrah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, uh, like a pepper almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't get, um, I don't get the, the signature green bell pepper that Carbonara can bring, um, but um, I do get some pepper quality to it yeah. and spice. Um, so uh, besides the cherry, I get some other red fruits. Yeah, I would say, yeah, a little, a little of a strawberry is not mm -hmm. towards the strong strawberry you feel in the Provençal wines, maybe, but still there is a little influence of that. A little of berries, the little you know, berries, little yeah. berries, like red berries, raspberry, yeah. raspberry, a raspberry, touch of yeah. raspberry, fresh raspberry. Yeah. And then there is the guavish uh, stone fruit, uh, yeah. refreshing part of the Lugana, the, yeah, the white minute. grape. That's not guava. <laughs> no, that's not in there, but anyway. Almost. It, almost. <laughs> almost. Um, and it's really crisp, it's fresh, um, it's dry. Most, in my experience, most rosés are dry. Um, I've had so many people go, is that rosé sweet? I'm like, it's not why Zinfandel. Yeah. You know, that, that, yeah. that's what people think no, rosé is absolutely. sweet, but no. Absolutely. This is really nice and dry. Yeah. Um, that's the idea. We want to make something which I was looking for the like, score for now. For the other wines. Right here? Thank you, man. There you go. So we wanted to make, you know, something which is not just a crowd pleaser, something that has some winemaking content. So it's made, there is some complexity, but still is a fresh wine. It's, it's joyful, it's lively, it's easy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a beautiful wine. And um, it's actually a wine that you can totally um, drink, I would say, any time of year. I know that summer, spring, summer is like the quote rosé time. But you know, I find that rosé is a category you can you can drink pretty much any time of year, just depending on what cuisine you're. I definitely you're agree with you. I think it's becoming probably not only in the U.S. everywhere a little bit of an all year round products yeah. for sure because of the taste of it. It's and this profile. It's could be a substitute sometimes to a, a white wine. Some, some people yeah. could substitute because it has a little Grigio, more structure to it, you know. And also has a little more structure. Exactly. Yeah. I, I agree with you absolutely. And. Uh, to us is giving a lot of fun because at least you know it's nice that every time you present it people is well receiving the, mm -hmm. the wine itself you right. know? and then we try to make the quality always very high so that you know you know you not have only the appealing part of it but then the juice is what right. really matters at the end and makes you come back you know and makes you want more of it absolutely so, yeah so that's important for us you want to try the white? Yes, yes. This is uh, this is the uh, the this is a passimento bianco, yeah. the garganega, the little bit of the on the label, or you know, this is a picture of Juliet's house wall in Verona. Oh, okay. Where they say three thousand people a day they go there and make their love signature, their love messages. So we said there is actually a story behind it. I may tell you now. 
the, story, the, the point is, how can you explain Verona? How do you point yourself on the map and tell where you are from right. with an image, with just a, a frame? And that's the graffiti we do on the white and the red. This is actually the an uh, uh, artist, uh, a photographer, a fashion photographer, very famous called uh, Testino. Okay. And he did like a picture of uh, frames in Verona. And one of the staples of the city, together with the Colosseum and the old uh, castle monuments, is Romeo and Juliet wall. And we said, we hired him to make a marketing campaign out of Verona, and this was the perfect picture to put on the bottle for us. Oh yeah, because it's the mo it's the representative of Verona perfectly, and it's a fun, colorful uh, image. You know, right? Yeah, it's lovely, and it's lively too. So we said before on the white, a garganic a grape. So there is the native indigenous grape as well of, of Soaveri region. So eastern okay. side of Valpolicella. It's a grape that can be nice acidity, can be very light. So our idea was, well, let's take the best of uh, everything. So let's do the appassimento method. So you again, you harvest by hand, you put all the fruit on these uh, straw mats and you dry the grapes for about some time, yeah, according. So that uh, concentrated the sugar in the grapes and let the water go. Yeah. And this gives body to the wine. And on the other hand, the acidity of the grape should compensate, should, the idea is to have a perfect balance between the viscosity of it and a little bit of acidity mm -hmm. of the grape. And it's very nobody. I think nobody did this in pretty much around. Nobody, yeah. nobody really made a, a white uh, dried grapes wine, which is not sweet because we have a right. sweet wine, like, you know, from the south of Italy. Yeah. I mean, the fruit characteristic is so, like, so prominent and so fresh and, and ripe. Um, it's actually that. <laughs> There is a little apricot here, I, I get this absolutely from it. Um, I agree with you. It's not because I just finished drinking some. There is definitely some apricot. But yeah, it's just, it is so fresh and vibrant. If you're, you know, like the shard drink, drinker likes a little bit the creaminess of it, the viscosity. Mm -hmm. The Sauvignon drinker find this interesting because now it's a little, you know, proper testing temperature, but you feel the, the especially when it's fresh, the a refreshing acidic part mm -hmm. that can be Sauvignon style, not grassy, not in New Zealand. No, 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 yeah. Kind of just the acidity. But you, you know get, the acid, the, the refreshing yeah, part. Yeah, the freshness, exactly. yeah, the crisp, fresh The crisp, part, exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's why it can be an interesting white. For sure, in, home, in the restaurants, they love it because they never heard of a garganega made with the dried grapes. Right. It's very, 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 very precise stuff. You know? Yeah, so. exactly. No, this is. And we love Thank this you so one. much for bringing this one out. I, I really like me. this one. <laughs> okay, so now we have. I would love next you to one. try the rosso. So we have bianco and rosso, very simple, white and red. Okay. The rosso is where we started this appassimento project. It's a, a blend of three grapes, Corvina, Croatina, and Merlot. So everything is harvested by hand, and that's where we do the appassimento process as well. So one month of dried grapes. Everything is then picked, manual harvested, and then we dry them out for uh, about four weeks, five weeks. Some, uh, pretty, much like, pretty much like that. And, uh, you see the again the cherry we said before. Absolutely, it's like black cherry though. Black cherry because yeah. we, we it's more ripe. They might more of a ripe cherry, right? Because right. we dry the grapes. Yeah, the fruit the fruit seems to be a little more darker. Um, the cherry is absolutely there. It feels a little bit more like a like a black cherry and yeah, like absolutely. a little the black big, raspberry. The black cherry, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's what it is. And again, the idea is here to pursue the balance between mm -hmm. the cherry, also you dry the grapes, so the sugar content becomes stronger mm -hmm. and the boldness of the wine becomes stronger. But we don't want to make an Amarone here. We want an everyday thing. So right. we use the Merlot as well. The Merlot, 
should be helped with the vegetal elegant notes as well. So the idea is to balance, you know, the heavy cherry and the elegance of the Merlot. Right. At the end, it's a 14% alcohol. You don't even realize probably. And he's no. like, you know, it's it's drinks like he's a he's not necessarily a food wine. I think. It's not necessarily a totally wine, just, you know? I could totally just like sit on the couch and just yeah, drink exactly, it. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the plan. Watch some TV, listen That's to music, whatever. Yeah. You know, you go for a nice barbecue outside. It's a fantastic afternoon wine, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, some people even, you're, you said San Antonio before. Mm -hmm. I go, I love Texas. God bless Texas, really. And uh, yeah, I go there like three, four times a year and they are, we do fantastic together. And they love sometimes to chill the passimento. Yeah. They put it on ice, just the bottle and keep it fresh. And uh, because the, the, the fruit and the tannin are strong enough to and be playful and tasteful yeah. also with the I ice. Can see, I can see chilliness a little bit. Yeah. It will, it even, it's already a smooth wine, but it will smooth that out even more. Yeah, yeah. probably. Make yeah. it real easy to drink. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if some somebody, you know, if we are too much into scores, I don't know what, what you really think, but anyways, they, they always help. And the Rosé got a nice 91 decanter. Okay. The Bianco as well, 91 decanter. And the Rosso had a 92 from James Suckling. Nice. Recently, so, you know. Very, very good. It's a good, uh, it's a good uh, little response from them. And... In another lifetime, I used to score wines. I don't do oh, that you anymore. Did, yeah? I don't score them anymore. I just say, I tell you if I like it or not, and if it's if it's good or not, you know. And these are really good, and I like these wines a lot. So while I'm not scoring them, the scores you have said, I'm not disagreeing with them. Let's <laughs> put it that way. I'm not disagreeing with the scores. Um, Thank you. The, that's, these that's, are, that's a starting point. Yeah. Thanks, God. No, you know, yeah. Touch wood. No. Yeah, I just, you know, I just, I think they're excellent wines, you know. Thank you. Um, and I just, what, the reason I stopped scoring was I found that I didn't have the confidence in myself a few, you know, several years ago to give these 90, 91, 92 points because I don't know why. It's just weird. I, all my wine scores were between 85 and 89 almost almost always. And I was like, why am I even scoring if I won't go above 89 hmm. and I won't really go below 85 unless it's really bad? So you mean you're really always in the same... Uh, so yeah, so why, that was made no, made no sense for me to score wines ever. So, um, And there was around that time, at least in some circles, there was um, somewhat of a pushback on scores in general. Uh, but yeah. scores help. Scores help. Scores give you an idea what's going on. But besides the score, I really think um, just like any critic of any of any product, yeah. you need to listen or read or find out what they're saying. Yeah. And I think that's when I when I do my wine reviews, how I describe the wine and how enthusiastic I might be about yeah. it. Yeah. And if I'm like, you need to buy this wine, or it's like, it's all right. That should be enough for my viewer to see. No, no, for sure. But for they sure. also I should mean... also know how I'm saying it. Because sometimes with critics, and I like to use movies as an example. You know, if this movie critic always review, you know, if 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 you don't, if you agree with a certain movie critic, then you know you're gonna like that that movie. Um, yeah, yeah. If you no, disagree with the That's movie critic, That's a risk. then That's then a you risk. know, well, if he doesn't like it, I'm probably gonna like it. So that's a risk. That's but a risk. But you know, I scores, respect. They, they scores do have a yeah. scores have a purpose and they have a place exactly. Um, exactly. and uh, I think what it does is it gives you a really good general idea um, of where that wine's at and then you know if it's a style that you probably like you know definitely read read the the actual description yeah and then that just reinforces like yes i'm gonna like that wine and then that helps helps with buying it you know hey i i still look at scores i look at scores like a score is not just wine i look at scores of when i buy things on amazon I want to see what the rating is, but I yeah. also read the reviews so I know. Um, That's a shortcut. The score yeah. is always helping to drive the decision, especially it, if you're not big into wine. I mean, you, know, you need yeah. some help. It, help, it helps you kind of weed out some of the wines that maybe you shouldn't look at. And then, okay, these are the wines which are highly rated. 
and then I can go from there and see what I might like. Absolutely. And that's what, yeah, they still serve a purpose. I just, I just don't feel like scoring wines anymore. <laughs> and it just stays down, which is I let, I let the, I let the other experts do that so that I'd I can. I'd love you to try the Aura Marone as well. Yes, can I, can I pick them? Of course. I think I have to pick them up on the other oh, side. Oh, is it, is it, uh, yeah. that's not this one? Uh, yes, but I want you to taste in very good shape with some oxygen open. Okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. More yeah, go ahead and take that off, mind? and then uh, not at all, and uh, we will we will get that on, get that going. All right. Well, while we're getting that, um, while we're getting that Amarone, um, again, just the experience here uh, with uh, with Provine off the charts way way off the charts it's uh it's uh overwhelming and um i feel lucky that that i'm able to do what i'm doing i i just about pinched myself when i first walked into the first hall and saw the enormity of what's going on here and just kept walking and walking and walking really i was just trying to find the they call it the press center which is kind of like the refuge for everyone who's media or press um and it's it's pretty cool. It's it's really pretty cool. Um, uh, I can put. We have lockers, and so we got all this information if we want. They can print stuff for you. Um, there's also um, there's also uh, um, like food you can get and drinks. It's, it's really cool. I was just I was just wasting time talking about the press center <laughs> and how cool it is. So I brought you three. Amazing oh, wow. James. Okay. Good taste. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah. here we go. All right. So we spoke a lot about Valpolicella and Verona, so we can and the passimento method. So right. we can not taste an amarone from where we are from. So what I brought you here is uh, an Amarone della Valpolicella, the 2013. Okay. We spoke about score. This is an awesome tre bicchieri from Gambero Rosso in Italy. Yeah, so explain yes, what that is. Because yeah, most Gam of my viewers may not know what that Gambero is. Gambero Rosso is like the, I would say, the Michelin star guide of Italy for wines. Yes. So it's like the accolade book of the best wine of Italy. They do a selection of about 150 wines okay. every year. And so we have been with them uh, with this Amarone this year and with this other Amarone last year. So we're trying two of them now. And then uh, there was another nice review of Parker too on this. It was a 94 from Parker, nice. which is not bad. And uh, But the most important thing is there are two Amarones and a Valpolicella. They are same name, same producer, very different style and okay. different piece of land where they come from. Okay. And you'll see the difference. And um, uh, to go back to um, the Italian, uh, the Italian, more, they did a testing yesterday. It's more like too. it's more like a, an award, really, than a than necessarily a score, right? No, it's not exactly. They they taste. Uh, I don't even know how many wines of Italy, all of them, probably. And then uh, they do a selection, and every winery can get only one Trebicchieri, okay. which is the three glasses. The three glasses, right? It's like the three stars Michelin, the three right, glasses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they do a selection overall of Italy of about 150 wines, not more than that. Right. So, yeah, I, in many ways, I think that's more indicative of the wine. Uh, yeah. Because it, it's a different, it's a different way, it's a different way to I don't know, score or classify the wine. But yeah, I, I know that if you get three glasses. That's yeah. They did that's a, a lovely important. tasting yesterday too. There was a, a yeah. venue with all the awarded wines. Here, the fair at Provine yesterday. Yeah, and, I, th uh, I think I tried to ask yeah. them about going to that. They didn't, they didn't get back to me. That's okay. Who didn't get back to you? I don't know. I, I, I emailed the main email account. And I said, asked if they had something going on. I, maybe it was. I don't know if it's a different day, but I said, don't you have something? Yeah, it was yesterday. I said, uh, can I do it? They never replied. That's okay. It's all right. I'm, I'm not. Sorry, a, I'm not. I'm not mad. Next year, maybe I hope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, and, and it's off topic, but I, I ended up the restaurant I went to last night yeah. just out of just randomness. I just was looking for some place to eat. Yeah. Um, they had three winemakers there. Three, wi oh, three yeah? women winemakers. Two from France. One from uh, Germany, though. One of the one of the French winemakers actually from the Netherlands. And um, I was talking to the chef. 
uh, when it slowed down a little bit, I told him what I was in for, and he goes, come on over here. And so I got to taste some wines yesterday. Oh. So it's all right, you know. <laughs> I think anyway. that's, that's all it's about also, you know, it's so fun that you go to an international fair, uh -huh. you meet people, eventually you go to a restaurant and you sit down with a producer of uh, Alsace in France, which is fantastic, and you speak about wine, you get drunk together, yeah. probably for uh, the next two hours. And, yeah, I mean, I the, mean, the experience just, you know, it was, all I was doing was just at, thanking the chef for um, his, because I, being a restaurant person, former now, um, were you I owning watched, a restaurant? You, you were in I was. Uh, I worked in one. I didn't know. Yeah, you know. I worked in one. Um, so because of that, every time I go out to restaurants, I always watch. I like to sit in a certain way. Yeah. Unless I'm going to have my. I'm going to do this all day in the phone. Um, but I like to watch the restaurant and how it operates. And I happen to be where I was sitting. I actually could see into the kitchen, <laughs> so I could see the chef communicate yeah. with uh, his staff. Like 99% in German. He did speak a little bit of English because he has somebody from America, he told me. Um, but I watched this whole staff and they were outstanding. Some of the best, some of the best service, yeah, uh, overall cool. team service I've seen in a very long time. So I wanted to thank him for that. And then he's like, you're here for Provine. I'm like, yeah, I'm here for Provine and I just need a place to eat. And he goes, well, we're having a tasting in this room, so come on in. I'm sure he appreciated you saying to him, you're really doing oh, yeah. a great job. I think it never hurts, really. I think it's, oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's always, always everyone likes to get a compliment, hear. right? No, but you know, especially during the fair, you know, it's the highly traffic, highest traffic moment of the year. And they have international press and they say, you know, people yeah. recognize my job. I think it's important. Yeah, I mean, he I had, think it's important. they had a special event going on and he was doing regular service on a Saturday night, some of the, uh, one of the busiest nights, and yeah, it, was, it was fantastic. Sure, so, sure. Anyway, let's get back to the wine. <laughs> back to the business. It's Amarone 2013. So okay. it's a blend of Corvina, Corvinone, Rondinella, and Negrara. Okay. And this is coming from vineyards on the east side of Alpolicella. All right. Uh, it's a mix of parcels that are a little altitude, like 250 meters on the sea level, and flat. Uh, um, and again, this is all the Amarone process at, as max as it can be. So, harvest by end, we use just a, a tiny bit of your production, like 50%, that's the rules. Now it will be even 40%. So, imagine if you have one, one acre of property, right. you cannot do all Amarone, you have to do 40% because they want to keep the quantity very low and the quality high. Okay. Uh, and then you do the passimento, you age for about three years, and then uh, you can go to the market, but three years is the minimum. So now we are having a 13. Okay. So it's now six years, and that's our current vintage in the in the market. Wow. So I'm gonna take a quick picture of this. Please. And this label is just a, a is a limited edition of the same wine. Okay. I would love to talk to you about our press campaign somehow. But yeah, we did this fantastic. Uh, uh, three shot picture, three different subjects. They are our testimonials, three talented young guys, actually two ladies and one guy. And one of these three talent is a lady. She's a designer, a, an artist, and she designed this kind of labyrinth. Uh, she does all these shapes and geometric ideas, and we engraved one of her design with the laser on the glass. Okay. So the idea is to have this limited 7,000 bottles only produced of this wine. Very nice. And uh, yeah, yeah, some of those will be in the States for sure. And you know, it's a unique piece if you want, made yeah. by this artist. We definitely need to take a picture of that too. And uh, currently, we spoke about score before on Wine Spectator. We do, we do, you know, we do a little of advertising. We do that. Why not? And the main picture of that is not our vineyards, is not our face, is this. Uh, press campaign, these guys, okay. uh, with a fantastic colorful picture, there is a nice frame with all their life represented in the frame together with the wine. Yeah. And they are our subject, this is our new idea, you know, for okay, yeah. for the press, it's, it's awesome. And we, we want to convey this message, always have fun. Uh, not dramatic approach to the to the product to okay. the wine. Yeah, um, first of all, this wine, amazing. Um, <coughs> It's, it's, it's drinking really well. Here the cherry mm -hmm. is definitely one of the major signatures. No, it's definitely one of the major parts. Imagine you do 
a cherry, a cherry uh, tasting grape, then what you do, you dry it out. So all the flavor concentrate and focus it is. in that. And then you age partially in cherry barrel as well. We use cherry barrels. Cherry woods? Cherry woods. Cherry, all right. So we try to enhance as much as possible the yeah, it's it's almost like a, it's almost like a cherry liqueur type of flavor. Um, uh, I forgot what the forgot what cherry liqueur. What, what is L that? Liqueur, like a li ah, liqueur. Liqueur, sure. yeah. So li not not quite like that, but it's got that kind of um, really. Um, concentrated yeah. flavor to it. Yeah. Um, it's also got a little bit of dustiness to it, uh, a little earthiness to it. Um, yeah, and then the tertiary, you know, as we said uh, before, there is a little bit of evolution in the bottle. So right. being a 13, the tertiary notes, tobacco, a little spice, a little yeah. leather, a little chocolate, they right, come yeah. out. And they're definitely very typical notes of the Amarone, the uh, the tobacco, leather, and, and, uh, and chocolate. We, we did sometimes a vertical of old vintages of Amarone with different type of chocolate. It was, it was awesome, it's oh, fantastic, Mike, because the pairing between, one, yeah. you know, the very bitter chocolate, very style of chocolate, and, uh, and Amarone, it's, yeah. it's interesting. It's great. And if I have a little more of, of, of your time, I mean, I'm happy uh, yeah. to taste the... The single vineyard. I'm on project. your time. That's. <laughs> I have no Are more. You really? So, so I have no more appointments today. Okay, so, so we have another. I mean, well, the fair close at seven, so you have another three hours. Well, I, ha I have an appointment at seven. That's that, but <laughs> but I do have to get to that hotel. Is that a date? No. No, no. no unfortunately not. Um, no, I, but um, I, while you were gone, I mentioned something about I had a, some accommodation change. So um, where I was staying last night, I'm not staying there again. I think we, I don't know if we mentioned it. So I do have to go to that hotel. I'm going to stay at, check in, and then go back to this. Um, it's a tasting. It's um, okay. it's actually for the uh, for the VDP. The German, uh, the German wow. VDP tasting. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, For that's sure. it's it's great to be part of the press. You get invited to all kinds of stuff and get to get to we hang love, out with we, cool people no, too. No, no, we love <laughs> we love yeah. to have you. And, oh, sorry. No problem. And then for us, the the the, the judgment, especially in some project, especially in, in the most, uh, if you want, uh, expensive, but the point is more serious project. Yes. We really want to hear the feedback of the expert palate. Not only because you need the high score. Obviously, a nice score helps everybody, right? Right, but, right. But uh, the sophisticated palate, the people that try the wines every day, a lot of wines. We want, you know, we, we want we want to be positioned and not be afraid to be put together with the best French wines, the best Burgundy, the best Cab from Napa, the best Barolos. Right. Quality, 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 quality. And, yeah. Uh, the endorsement of you guys make our job is part of the, some of the things that makes our job worth it also, you know, the recognizement of people that understand what they're drinking. Right. And then, of course, everybody who loves us and buy the wine. Yeah, you, yeah. And in so, fact, uh, my dear am I, never say never. Oh yeah, so that's, which one we're, we we're doing the 13 right now? Single vineyard. Okay. Only the Amarone, the best Amarone we've ever done, hopefully. And uh, actually, that is still as to come. The best Amarone that you've ever done still has to come. Yeah, because you no you, you've never done your best. The best is yet to come, right? But uh, the, Valpo uh, the Valpolicella is a superior, so it's not a ripasso. There is not dried grapes here. It's just uh, what the terroir can give to the wine. Okay. So low, high density in the vineyard, like 10 to 12,000 vines per hectare, okay. which is almost a champagne density. So many vines everywhere. So very few cluster per vine and a lot of extraction. So strong, meaningful, rich grapes that struggle their life to grow and develop themselves. So they are full of richness inside. And then wood, a lot of wood. Yeah, you know, um, oh, wow. there's this, there's this quality to it that's really, really intriguing, really like delicious and smells awesome. I want to say it's it maybe is the wood and almost like a like a smoked wood, um, like the uh, like the embers, like after a fire. We do a mix, a mix yeah. of a medium toast. Barrique, new, okay. and then large wood. Okay. I think the large wood 
large bar barrel body mm -hmm. gives uh, this kind of uh, a little uh, ash character, a little old. Uh, yeah, ash. Yes, very. Uh, you yeah. know, ash as well. Yeah. And uh, uh, this kind of smokiness, as you say, in fact, and uh, and is a mix. It's a mix of the blend of the of the grapes. It's a mix of the very strong acidity of the terroir, which the terroir yeah. gives to the grapes. Right. And uh, and uh, the the wood, the wood uh, utilization. Uh, it's a small production here. We don't look, even if the property is beautiful, it is fairly big, it's about 60 acres. We don't do a huge production. It's, we use for these wines only the very selected top of the hill. Okay. And where there is this high density. And, uh, you know, it's a 2013 Valpolicella. We just got an Amarone 2013, mm -hmm. right. which is not even, it's not the oldest, but it's not the newest. You see 15 in the market now. Right. So it's, you know, it's, it's for, Expert drinkers. This is for okay. expert drinkers. Yeah. And, uh, and I hope you like it. I think I it's, very it's very special. Just the color. You see, just the color is different from the other wines. Mm -hmm. it's this kind of gra granata, uh, ru not ruby, but how do you call it? Brick, a little brickish. Yeah. So there's like, uh, so a little orange, a little brown. Uh, yeah. The oxidation yeah. is, is setting in. And I can't wait to try this wine in 15 years. Oh my God, yeah. The winemaker who's our cousin is like saying, hey, I I can put on the back label here my address where I live and I can sign hey my name is Giovanni I live here you can come and get me if you want this wine is gonna last 35 years because the acidity the tannin the, the polyphenols here is so strong yeah. the structure that goes yeah we can do it you know it's it's perfect so, no, I, I would love to see what this is gonna be like in 15 years yeah so it's kind of a little of a baby years, I'm alive, baby. Here you <laughs> I might be I you hope for know. you, yeah. Well, <laughs> come on. Touch wood, as you say. So, yeah. you know, yeah. very old school style, very bone to the dry, bone dry, dry to Absolutely, the bone. Absolutely, yeah. It's almost no, pretty much no residual sugar. 15% of alcohol for our Policella is important. It's a lot of extraction. Yeah, to the and wine. you really don't even feel it. You really don't, you really don't taste it. It's really well integrated. Thank you, because the yeah. acidity and the, you know, the freshness of the grapes somehow makes you have this kind of mouth watering on the side of the right, tongue yeah. and keep the acidity alive. So hopefully after a glass you want another glass. I mean, you tasted so many wines in the world. Tell me if you know a wine that you like. I mean, in a very good wine of the world that you don't want to finish in 10 minutes. Right. No, also the big Bordeaux, the good wines, the champagnes. Mm -hmm. you, you want more because it's good. Even right. if it's important, it's complex, you want more because it's tasty, it drinks well, no? Yes. That's what is important, I believe. Absolutely. You know, and, and go back to the alcohol, it's not, that you, it's not that it's not there that you don't, it's not that you don't know, it's, it's, it's obviously not 12 and a half percent alcohol wine, but it's not like, I've had plenty of wines that are 15 percent and you go, Whew, I can really taste it. No, it's it's again, it's well integrated. It's balanced. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really nice. That's that's uh, that's the idea. And the Amarone, you tell me the alcohol later. I'm covering now with my okay. hand, but tell me one. <laughs> exactly. And how do you earlier, like the earlier today? So earlier today, I had someone ask me, just not on camera. It was just like a regular tasting, tasting me on something. And he goes, okay, tell me how old it is. It's like, well, obviously it's older than I think it's going to be. I said, well, maybe it has like five or six years of age and it was like a 96. Wow. And it was a white wine too. Wow. It was, uh, it was a Gruner. Wow, fantastic. I couldn't believe fantastic. it. It was like fresh. Fantastic. But like these wines from, from Germany, they can they can have this, this longevity. Yeah. Like the Rieslings is crazy. It's actually, it was, an Aust it was Austrian. The Aust yeah, but still. Yeah, 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 yeah Middle Europe. Do you like the fair so far? Yeah. Oh my goodness, Provence. it's, I, I already said it on, on, the, on the video numerous times, it's it, it's so huge, it's overwhelming, and yeah. I've, I haven't even even scratched the service just because I just kind of, I've had I've had a, a lot of appointments today, yeah. so I, I try to like do a couple tastings in between appointments, but not get too stuck at any one place, so I didn't like yeah. miss an appointment. Sure. Um, so I, I definitely skipped over a lot of things, and you know, Tuesday, honestly, the my game plan for Tuesday wasn't really to, uh, I think it was to do like the, the lowest number halls, because I was I started over here. 
um, and then work my way towards like hall seven, which is the last of the halls. But things are in seven, eight, and nine, um, and I probably shouldn't say this on camera, but they are the wines I don't have the most interest in. The wines from hall 17 to hall 10 or 11. Okay. So basically France, uh, Italy, Germany, Austria, you know. Those, All of Europe. Yeah, those, the, and Spain. Um, those are the ones that hold the most of my interest on a personal level and professional level also. But the, the other halls, they have kind of the rest of the world and especially things that are like from the United States, I have access to those yeah, all day long. I don't really, like if something's there, I just have to try. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's like, well, why not? Is there um, a lot of American wines? I haven't been there Not a yet. lot, not a lot. But there are some fairly well-known uh, producers there yeah. that like when I when we went through the producer list, I was like, wow, this person's there. So, you know, I'll, I'll at least get over there. But Tuesday is going to be a day where if I want to revisit some things, like frustration from today, Perfect. I can do that. Tomorrow, I don't have a lot of appointments so I can really concentrate on hitting, hitting um, uh, some uh, some booths yeah. to like to like really check some stuff out. So anyway, on to this wine. That's the grand finale, as you say, so, in, the, in the U.S. Even if you hadn't prepped me about vintage, because we still we have some talk about that, you can already smell that it's older. It has age to it. Um, it's got the classic. Um, uh, oxidized um, aromas to it um, in that kind of um, dried plum uh, almost prune quality to it um, which I do get in like older Amarones um, the color alone well not the, the color also helps with with the turning age um, and Italian wines in general just they tend to have not all of them, but some of them tend to have a little age anyway, so they tend to get that orange uh, or brick color. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the especially oxidation in the Barolo, yeah. in the Piedmont yeah. side. Barolo, Barbarescos, they definitely yeah. bricky, brickish yeah. color. When we're absolutely. doing wine tastings, yeah. and they're actually pouring the wine for us in the glass, if I see orange, I'm like, I already know I'm in Italy. It could be elsewhere. Yeah. But pretty rare, unless they're going to give us a really old Bordeaux or really old like Chateau Neuf de Pop or Syrah. Maybe those are usually too dark. is never that. It never gets orange. No, never. No. It, I mean, it gets browner, but not that orange tint no, like no, Italian no, wines. No, yeah, I agree with you. Maybe maybe if it was like an old, old like a Gran Reserva Tempranillo, like a Rioja, that has like 10 years of age on it, you might you'll see some orange on it too. Mm. But anyway, no, I mean. The, the nice of it, Italian mm. wines, there are so many and so different. They can be, they can be any kind of wine. It's the, just the grapes. The native grapes of Verona are like uh, of Verona is like 300 grapes. All yeah. of Italy is about 2,000. 2,000 native varietals, you know, like yeah. the Corvina, the Croatina, the Trebbiano di Abruzzo, the uh, Turbiana. Yeah, and these are not you the, name it. And these are not the synonyms of. It's not the one grape with like 20, you know, of the same name. It's individual grapes. Individual species, yes. Yeah, very it's, native. Very every region, they're, 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 you know, they have their kind of native stuff. Like we were tasting before the Soave Garganega. Garganega grape is a grape which is pretty much only in Verona, you know, white grape. And uh, it's, this diversity, I think, is it's crazy, and it's an opportunity for people like us, yeah. you know, guys like us, to, to play with the diversity and find out fantastic stuff and combination. So, so if I, even if you hadn't have said this is, or may, may, uh, kind of hinted this is older, or an older wine, um, if I was blind tasting this, and I might be really overreaching on this, if I was blind tasting this, I would say that this would probably have at least 20 years of age, possibly 30. I might be overshooting it. It might only be like 15 years old, but in my head, from my experience, so I've had wines that are that are in that 20 to 30 year range. Um, it's I think at least in that range. I don't think it'd be any older, but somewhere 20 to 30 years ago. This is a 2011. 2011. It really tastes with. It really tastes has a lot of age to it. Like I've had wines that are about 20 years old that are, that. that that's kind of cool. 
you can't see it, but her USB stick has a oh, yeah, has yeah, a cork. Uh, yeah. Has a cork. Yeah. Sorry, it's sorry, cork. I got distracted. I get distracted it's with technology. A it's a cork. Yeah. Wine and technology. That's the, the 1337. What did we discuss? No. So, so the 1337. Uh, the quick story. When I first started, before I even started this, um, I was with my parents. We were in a we were in a, a store that sold sells wine. Uh, world market. You know, you know, cost yeah. plus world market. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. So sure. they have like a, rose, you can find. Yeah, so they have like a nice eclectic wine. And we were going there, and I saw this wine, and I thought it was just three three seven, not knowing what it was. It had a black background, a red lettering, I, and I thought it was. I thought there was. I just didn't see the one. So one three three seven. That's a. Um, it's called Leet Speak, and it's a. It's a version of writing that uses numbers as letters, and it's used mostly or originally used in like hmm. like computer hacking or video game you know gamers, uh, uh, and they would use numbers as letters. So L E E T. Now that's shorthand for elite. Now I've been saying this a lot recently. If I t if I went back ten years ago. I would never call my podcast 1337 Wine or Elite Wine because it, because I'm not I'm not saying these are not elite, but like when people think elite wine, they're thinking like Grand Cru Burgundy's, First Growth, yeah. Bordeaux's. Um, I don't ever review that stuff because I, that's not what I do, and it's expensive. So um, that's a problem sometimes. But so when I we were in, we were in the um, we we're in we we're in World Market and I saw the wine, I was like, cool, someone named a wine for geeks not wine geeks but like geeks and nerds and me being one of those i thought what that was kind of cool I'm, I'm very much well, very you're much, a tech geek or i'm a nerd that? i'm a geek i'm a, I'm a yeah I'm, I'm all of that i, I love all that stuff um <laughs> so i grabbed the wine i looked at it i was like there's no one it's just 337 and it was 15 dollars i'm like that's too much money it's 10 years ago not that not that i you know regularly drop 50 60 70 bucks on a bottle of wine but at the time i was like really for yeah 12 bucks was like the most i wanted to spend on a bottle of wine so i put it back and um we're in the, we're in the checkout and i thought man 1337 wine that would be kind of a cool name for a wine so i was i already had some website names so i i went to uh godaddy and i bought it and then a few months later, my dad was like, what are you going to do with that name? You, you haven't done anything with it. Other than I set up a Twitter account immediately. Um, that, the... So I said, you know what? You know what? There's this guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. He lives in he lives in New York. Who's this guy? Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, is the wine maker of no, that? No, 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 no. He he. Um, my viewers know who he is. Well, some of them do. Um, I'm he, sorry. A very, 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 very long time ago, uh, did video podcasting, wine podcasting from his wine shop called Wine Library. It was called Wine Library TV. Uh, his father had a liquor store, and they built it into uh, really a big uh, wine shop in New Jersey. And um, uh, I used to watch him all the time. And I, I look up to him. I think he does a great job. He's very polarizing. Some people really hate him. Some people love him. I'm, a, I'm, on, I'm on the I love him side. On the lover side. So I told my dad, I said, maybe I'll be like the next Gary Vaynerchuk and I'll produce, I'll produce wine reviews. And he just kind of looked at me like, all right. And so that's, that's how this started. Oh. And my very first review was of that wine. The I did 337. 337 and then I forgot which episode but a few years later if I remember right I might I might my memory may be failing but I think I've reviewed the wine again <laughs> what wine what kind of wine was that it's, it's 337 is the is a clone of Cabernet Sauvignon uh, so and that's just it's called 337 because uh, it's a California, Cabernet, California. It's from California it's a Cabernet Sauvignon it's 100% of that clone and they also I haven't seen the other ones but they had like a Pinot clone I want to say it was 667 and I think they had like a Merlot clone it's like a wow. 180 something or 170 I haven't seen the other them, ones man. I haven't seen those in a while it was like it was a gimmick you know yeah, we're, we're, so. we're going to use the clone numbers and it's California and all that so that's where Elite Wine came from was I thought it would be a cool name for a wine. I have no plans to make a wine. Maybe uh, in the future. Who yeah. knows? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but I thought it would be a cool name for the wine. So that's where that came from. Um, anyway, I don't know how we got on that topic. <laughs> but this wine, 
outstanding. We went on the, yeah, and the, you know. I just uh, really felt it had a lot of age to it because um, I looked at color, yeah. and it's got some oxidation, like aged oxidation, um, like that, that dried, like the, 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 like the prune um, quality. Yeah. yeah, that prune quality. And I've been fooled before. I think somehow these guys still, uh, if you can, uh, let me say here, you know, a baby, meaning that like the Valpolicella, it has a very long longevity thanks to mm. the large extraction in the vines. And then there is a huge contribution from the appassimento. We dry the grapes three months here, 90 yeah. days. And that's probably where I'm getting that and you feeling. Get exactly, yeah. ri overripe kind of feeling if you want. And then uh, he ages in uh, new oak, French oak, medium toast. Okay. So the kind of smokiness as well, like at the Valpolicella, right, yeah. come there. And uh, it's, guess the alcohol. It's, it's, mm, uh, okay. It's a bomb. Well, this was, this was 15. I didn't really even notice it. This one, I noticed a touch more. So we're what just. What do you think? Yeah. We're just, we're just going to go. That'll probably be wrong again. 15.8. Uh, we're actually at 16.5. Percent. Okay, so I kind of I, I kind of lowballed it because I didn't want to I didn't want to like overshoot it like I did the years. No, so, my... but yeah, I mean it's well integrated. I mean it, it it's it's fantastic. The acidity is even more like you know even more than the Valpolicella here. I think you need yeah. a lot of nice acidity and bright right of that to compensate the the big body of the Marone, you know, which is a big big guy. Yeah, Marone. absolutely. And, uh, and this is only our, this project is pretty new, meaning that we work with the vine, this vineyard in the last years, but obviously, but this is the first release. It's the second release, actually. 2010 okay. uh, Amarone, 2012 Valpolicella was the very first release. Okay. Excuse me, and now 11 and 13. So, but already we got some scores. Trebicchieri yesterday. Yes. Again, the Italian guy. Congratulations. Guider. Thank you, thank you. But, you know, we, we have to never stop. Touch wood, we have to. Absolutely, yeah. To keep going this way and then uh, somehow the, the Parker guys and Suckling give us a good yeah. review so well, you know it's fun I hope when you come to Verona you come and visit us and I can bring you up there really yeah. I hope I can that would be, that'd be show incredible. you that spot it's fantastic absolutely it's and fantastic. I'm sure my dad will come on this one I asked I asked dad do you want to come with me to Provine because I have no I really want to go to Germany and I was like it's your loss you know uh -huh. um, but I, I said, yeah, but if I go to Italy, you want to go? He goes, of course. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I would expect him to come. Um, I would expect him to come to Italy if, uh, if, I, if I went. Um, We'd love to so, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Um, as far as like, you know, I know I don't get scores, but... You know, and, and I, I've now never, the tough part, huh? I never really actually, when I'm with the winery people, I never really do anything just to say, yes, they're good. But like, if I was, if I was sitting in front of these, if you weren't even here, I would be like all thumbs up on all these wines. These are, these are all amazing wines. If you see them, you should buy them. And that's, that's exactly what I would be like if you weren't here. Okay. Um, and if I cover my ears and the same thing, course? the same thing. <laughs> okay. And uh, with the scores, you're very, very... You want some scores? Strict, so... I well, mean, you, you say you never go up than more than 89. I gave a few higher than 89, because I started realizing I really so don't, should. So don't, don't tell them, it's okay, yeah. don't, don't tell them. It's... <laughs> I agree with the scores that I've already been heard, I've already heard, let's put it that way, like, um, I don't I don't think that these are undeserving of what Parker or Suckling or anyone else has Thanks. scored these, because they are amazing wines. Um, and, you know, I, I think what it was is, because I, because I, again, I felt like I wasn't giving the wines justice by not going above 89 or giving like a 90 or 91 on very rare occasions. I kind of felt that I was being disrespectful to the wines by not going into the 90 realms when, in fact, they really were in the 90 realms. Of course. Yeah, so that's why I was like, you know what, I'm not going to give scores anymore because I, I just... I just felt like I wasn't really being uh, uh, respectful to you the wines. You do entertainment. We do. You do a more fun job. Yeah. Probably somehow. And it, it relieves the pressure off of me too. 
to come up with a score. Okay, what's the score going to be? Like, yeah. no, I like the wine. It's more of the subjective. Yeah. Uh, I like the wine. View. Yeah, yeah. It's, I like the wine, and I tell people if they like that style, get it. If they don't like it, you know, there's other wines out there, and, and wine's a personal thing. You know, it's like a lot of things. You know, uh, we, we associate it. You know, associate wine with music and pizza. Pizza is very personal. Some people love Chicago. Some people love New York. Some people love Neapolitan. Some people like like true Italian pizza, which is no, not what What's I understand. What's the difference between Chicago and New York pizza? Uh, Chicago is deep dish. Uh, with and the cheese in the crust? The cheese is... The cheese is the, uh, no. And the crust, but the, the sauce and everything is also on top. It's okay. like integrated. Um, and then, and then if you live in the Midwest and you get like a thin crust pizza, they don't they don't make they don't cut it in like a pie cut like you get in New York. They they cut it in squares. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's called in Italian we say pizza al taglio. Yeah. Which is the, the cut pizza cutlet because yeah. it's, it's easy. I don't know. Yeah. That's, uh, so anyway, pizza is very personal. Everyone has their opinion on it. You know, in music, music is also very personal. Some 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 artists and some styles of music speak to people yes. and some don't. So we girls, all have our preferences. Girls are very personal. Yeah. Yes. Or, or absolutely. The, or the taste. I'm sorry. I mean, you yeah. Know, or, you know, uh, you know how how we view other Every, people, whether we're attracted exactly. to them or not, is very personal. You very know? personal. You know, I, I know the the media likes to tell us what what attractive is for men and women, but that doesn't mean really anything. Lots of people go against the grain on that. So, and I think in this influencer area where the social media are giving so much room, you know, to the opinion of certain influencers, mm -hmm. it's so important to keep your taste alive. I think it's very yeah. important. Yeah, and I try to be as objective. Um, as I can with 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 wine and recognize if even if I don't personally like the style recognize quality when it's there yeah you know exactly. at least let That's people important. know that hey this is a quality one I may not personally like it it may not be my, my favorite style um, but I like most wines it's pretty hard yeah. as far as a wine style it's pretty hard for me to find a wine that I don't like the, the actual style yeah. I might just maybe the wine itself maybe that wasn't made you know, in the way I don't, the way I like. Yeah, because but. maybe you know a lot, and you're, if I can say you're open-minded, and so yeah. you respect, you understand that uh, it's just a matter of yeah. style, and the wine is well made. Absolutely. You may not be that your favorite style, but still, you know, still is something that. And I, and that when I do uh, that, I usually equate that with music because um, we didn't talk about this, but my degree is in music. Oh, really? So I wow. can listen to a piece of music and know whether it was a well-made, well-written piece of music and if it fits the genre properly, but I may not like the song. I may not like that style of music, but I can recognize that that song, not just because a lot of people like it, but I can I can break that song down listening to it and go, yes, this, this song was well-constructed or the production of the song was really well done, the sound engineering and all that. So I can understand those things. So yeah. in my head, I, I look at wine the same way. I, I use music, not a lot, but I use music you know, frequently enough in my descriptions with wine or my comparisons um, to, to kind of talk about balance and uh, how things are made and, you know, if it's if it's engineered right, not engineered like yeah. manipulated, but engineered like, you know, you everything have, you works like out. like a, a song that you think can be fit mm. one of these? I'm very curious now. Like you want me to like come in, up with, in, with in musical styles? Musical style, at least for one of these wines. Um, Maybe one of these big guys, the last Amarone, or maybe on the Rosé or the, the Rosé. So, this Amarone, um, if I was going to listen to music with this, I would probably, because there's lots of darker fruit, I would probably want to listen to, not like depressing music, but like, like um, music that has some seriousness to it. You know, I now see, that could yeah. now that's a broad, that's very broad. I could be talking classical music, I could be talking goth music, I could be talking rock music, I could be talking, you know, all kinds of music, but some but, deepness, yeah, some deepness. As a matter of fact, um, so we brought that up a couple months ago. I went to a seminar and the gentleman was I played different pieces of music and we were tasting wine and he was talking about how when you listen to music it can it can change your interpretation wow. of the wine and one of the things he had was like cabernet sauvignon and he played beethoven's fifth 
very heavy, serious music, and they also played a heavy metal piece, and they both did the same effect. So we were trying to say it's yeah. not the genre; it's it's the I guess the feeling from the song, not the that genre. The effect to your taste. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So big wow, bold that's... wines tend to do really well with big bold music, and as a as a re- big generalization. So very interesting. But I would I would probably want to drink if I was drinking this wine, I'd want something. I wouldn't want to drink. I wouldn't want to like listen to like light light hearted music. It probably would make it would probably make the wine not taste as good. Um, if I could take listen to something a little more serious or something like that, yeah. it would it would actually enhance the wine. I know it doesn't need any enhancement, but that's what it would makes happen. Sense. Thank you. It would be more enjoyable. Well, I, mean, I think uh, I think we've kind of covered everything, um, and you've been so gracious. We've been hanging out for we're at we're at almost an hour and twenty minutes just talking, and we've been hanging out for another fifteen twenty. So we we hold the time you've, for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I told you. I'm honored that you came over yeah, and wanted to try I'm honored, more stuff. I'm honored you're able to give me some time. It's my pleasure. Well, folks, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, uh, it's been an amazing experience. Um, yet another like amazing interview that I've had uh, while being in this area um, I get to have some awesome Italian wine because Italian wine is definitely something that is very near and dear uh, it's one of my favorite just countries in wine I don't drink enough of it um, but uh, it's uh, definitely something that I really gravitate towards when I when I can and uh, Ali I just thank, thank you, you it's my pleasure. so much um, and uh, folks as always uh, you go to the website and click the links of, actually there it's over there anyway you click the links above to friend me up uh, I'll have links below for all the wines we were talking about and the winery um, and um, yeah we'll see everyone again next time bye